live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create amazing relationships. I'm George Camel, joined by best-selling author Rachel Cruz. This is your show, America. Give us a call at 888-825-5225. You jump in, we'll talk about your life and your money, and we'll try to help you take the right next step. When it comes to your biggest life's decisions and maybe smallest, you know, it can be a first world problem. Yeah. We're down to chat about we're, that we're, too. We're here for everything. No problem too small. Kenneth kicks us off in Houston, Texas. Welcome to the Ramsey Show, Kenneth. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Um, I'm doing fine for now. What's going on? Um, so I'm cur- currently in a situation where I'm living in my car. I started in November. Um, because I racked up about fourteen thousand dollars in credit cards. Oh man! And I have sixteen on my car as well. So sixteen, sixteen thousand. Yes, on my okay. car. Okay. Where were you living before this? Um, I was actually living in an apartment with my cousin and her boyfriend, but they decided to get their own place, so I ended up in a car. And right now you can't afford rent because of the debt? Yes. um, It's taking about half of my paycheck every two weeks, and my car payment is $346, so I'm left with about $200. So I I started this uh, debt snowball, and I managed to pay off one credit card, but it's uh, it's still not enough. enough. It sounds like we need to get your income up. Are you working full-time right now? Yes, yes, I am. Um, I actually, uh, I'm, I submitted applications to places. Um, I still haven't has uh, like I haven't heard back yet. So, what are you doing right now for work? Um, I'm a sterilization tech. Um, I clean dental instruments. Okay, and what do you make doing that? Um, I make eighteen an hour. Um, on my W two, it said I made thirty two thousand this year. Okay, and you're working forty hours a week. Um, it's between that, uh, we work half days on Fridays, sometimes full days. So between 36 and 40. Can you work extra if you chose to? Yes. I'm currently looking. Okay. I would see if you can work overtime with your sterilization job on top of that, getting another job on the side. Um, I mean, $18 an hour is not nothing. And so it feels like it's not just a car loan. What's your minimum payment on the credit cards? Um, all together um, is over five hundred, five twenty nine. I have a, a spread between seven. Hmm. And you have? Uh, do you have any friends or family that you could have to help support you? Go live with some friends for now, crash on a couch, anything like that? Friends, uh, no. Uh, family, I do. They have offered, but um, uh, the environment for me around them is I. I do not enjoy, so I'd rather stay in the car instead of having my emotional well-being. Um, are you safe living in this car? Where are you actually staying? Um, so I stay around around near my job. Um, so far, nothing has happened. Um, I, I believe, I don't know how many months, like four months now. Are you able to shower, and how how are you doing all of that? Um, so I actually have a gym membership. Um, so showering, um, doing whatever I need to do, I can handle that at the gym. Okay. Um, Kenneth, how much is your car worth? Um, it's, I checked on Kelly Blue Book. It's at 12000 the last time I checked. Okay. Worth 12000 Okay. You owe 16 some change? Yes. Yes. And um, no money saved? No, no, and the uh, because my biggest concern right now, Kevin, for you, yeah, it is what kind of George was hinting at, but it is your living situation. I mean, one of these, you know, four walls is what we say: food, shelter, utilities, transportation. Like these are things that um, are necessities; those are needs, and you're lacking, obviously, one of those. So the family situation, um, would it be could, like, is there a way to at least have a roof over your head and give yourself? a time frame and say within 90 days, I'm going to be out of here 
and looking for my own place. But just for the, you know, just the, the, the bare necessity of, you know, having having a home. That's what I, that I just worry for you when it comes to that is just having a place to stay. Well, the place um, at my family's place, I would have to uh, pay rent, which is not much, but it would. I wouldn't have any left to put towards my credit cards. So right now, if you're working forty hours a week at eighteen an hour, it's about twenty nine hundred bucks a month before taxes. So how much is getting taken out of these paychecks? Are you actually looking uh, at the paychecks and seeing where it's going? No. Um, I know that about 180 is being taken out for insurance, but taxes-wise, um, I have not checked. Okay, I would go look at that. Make sure you're not taking out too much in taxes. Uh, make sure that you're not putting any money away into investments. Right now, every dollar you can get out of those paychecks needs to go to covering your four walls, like Rachel mentioned. Yeah, because besides the you have the car payment, the credit cards, but you should have around $2,000 left. Because you got about 900 month. in payments? Uh, that's what it's looking like. Yeah. I get each paycheck, uh, it depends. Um, I get about the minimum, at least 1,060 each month. I mean, each, every two weeks. Okay. So the first thousand covers your debt payments. Where's the other thousand going? Uh, I have no idea. Okay. So I think that's, that's going to be a, that's a key piece to this, Kenneth, because a thousand dollars, I'm like, that's. A significant amount, right? So I would want you yeah. um, to be tracking and knowing, like, this is exactly where every single dollar is going, right? And even just going back to the basic of a budget. Um, and we can, if you hold on the line, we'll give you every dollar premium um, to be able to figure out so specifically where that is. Because I don't want you, yeah, I don't want you behind on payments. Mm. In a perfect world, I want you to be able to to have enough money to pay rent somewhere, Um and you need to be working every weekend. I was going to say weekends and even nights, Kenneth. It's going to be exhausting, but you're, I mean, you're, you're going to have to dig yourself out of this hole. And one of the, I mean, the two ways to do that is income and expenses, right? Those are the two parts of the equation. So upping the income, lowering the expenses uh, is going to, is going to help you gain some traction. Do you have insurance bills as well to pay outside of healthcare? Uh, no, it's, it's too much for me right now. Um, like auto insurance? Can, yeah, for the minimum for me is 400 so. Why is that? I can. You have a bad I, driving I record? Have, no, my driving record's good. Um, it's just been like that. Uh, the least I have paid is 300 Maybe it's because I, I was in an accident, but it wasn't my fault. But, Kenneth, you but, need auto insurance, man. Even if it's 300 bucks, you're in a very risky position right now. Jump on to RamseySolutions.com, connect with uh, one of our insurance pros to help you with that, and hang on the line. We'll send you every dollar premium to help you make a plan for every one of those dollars. Wishing you the best. Hey guys, I've told you before about Christian Healthcare Ministries, a health cost sharing ministry, but listen to Jenna, a CHM member. She says, one of my biggest concerns about entrepreneurship and motherhood was figuring out how to take care of our health expenses. But we have found a solution that works for us in an incredible way. She loves that with CHM, she can help other families who need it and receive help back when her own family has an eligible medical event. CHM has been a godsend for Jenna. That's her CHM story, and it could be yours. Learn more and join at chministries.org slash budget. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, joined by Rachel Cruz this hour. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Maria is up next in Chicago. Maria, welcome to the show. Thank you. What's Thanks going on? taking my call. Oh, absolutely. Um, I was calling because I've had this um, collections um, 
since my husband passed away. Uh, I think it was even before then, but I never saw it until mm-hmm. after. Um, he passed away August 4th, 2021. So and, sorry. Um, thank How you. How old was he? 49. Wow. Um, sudden heart attack. Oh. oh, gosh, Maria, I'm so oh. sorry. Thank you. I'm, I'll try to get through this without crying. No, you're okay. Um, you t- you you're take okay. your time. You're okay. So I don't know what this is. I don't know what the, um, it says it's a mortgage account statement from a collection agency. So it's up to $44,837. And I don't know what it even means. Was this for a mortgage on a house? Well, we, ha- I still have the house. Um, and I've been pay- making payments. I've never been late or anything. Um, it's just this one thing coming from a collection agency. Have you contacted just, them to verify the debt? I have not because I didn't know what I should do, you know, how I should do it. You know, I didn't know what to say to them, basically. Is the debt, was it in your husband's name? or It was in both our names. And then I noticed after he passed, it just has my name on it now. Okay. And you don't know where this is from. You don't know what it is. It, no, it just says, like, I was looking at, I found a paper that was back from 2015 as the statement date, and it just says at the top, uh, real-time resolutions, mortgage account statement. And at that time, it says the outstanding principal was 37468 and the interest is at 7%. It says it's until August 1st, 2037. Um, Do you think this could have been some kind of second mortgage that your husband had taken well, out? That's what I thought, but on my mortgage um, website, you know, when I go in there and everything, it shows the principal, it shows the first and the second mortgage, but none of them are that same amount because mm. I still owe 173000 on the mortgage. Okay. I would contact this collector and what you need to ask for is a debt validation letter. And they legally okay. have to provide that for, uh, to you. And that's going to show okay. exactly how much you owe, what creditor the collector is representing, and confirmation of all of the, you know, the information, the balances, the account numbers. And that will help you understand okay. what this is for and if this is legit. Okay. Um, yeah, Make sure there's no errors on there. it every month. What was that? Make sure there's no errors on there. Have you pulled your credit report, okay. Maria? No, I haven't in the years. Okay, so I would do that. And, um, you know, it's a good thing to just to check it even once a year. Um, Mm -hmm. You can go to annualcreditreport.com and pull this for free. Don't pay for this. And you can pull it from all three credit bureaus to get a full picture of what debts are attached to your name. Yeah, just to make sure that, yeah, you're able to see. Because, I mean, on one end, it's either something your husband did and you were unaware of it, and now it's mm-hmm. it's in because if it's in both of your names, then yeah, then it is right. in your name now, or right. um, you know, in a weird way, it could be like identity theft. Someone you know got your social security number or something. I mean, I don't know, right? So you just right, want to make right. sure and validate that this is actually legitimate. Um, okay. And I would look for signed documents as well, like if they if the collections agency has any. Um, tracking of where it came from and you and it may be kind of a rabbit trail that you go down um Mm -hmm. because i'm sure it got sold to another collections i mean like who knows how many people have actually handled this debt uh but if yeah if you can get or even call that company um have you even just googled that like the i have and it just says it's a collection agency but it doesn't tell me anymore you okay. know, like, yeah, I would I would contact know. them. And here's the deal. Never give debt collectors access to your checking account. You set the right. terms. You let them know what your situation is. And you have 30 days. Once they send you the debt validation letter, you'll have 30 days to respond with a debt verification letter. And I'll get okay. our team to send you a link. We've got a great blog called What is a Debt Validation Letter? We have a sample um, letter in there that will help you figure out how, how to frame this up. And we're also going to hook okay. you up with a free financial coaching session with someone that can walk you through the details that we don't have time to do on the air. But I want to make sure that we get mm-hmm. this handled for yeah. you because it's, it's scary yeah. on top of the grief. I know, and it keeps – yeah, and it keeps – going up and up every every month that they send me these letters that I've kept every single one of them. Good, um, good. Yeah, and I just don't, and I'm just like, I don't know what this means. I don't know what it is. He never discussed any of the mortgage or anything with me, mm. um, you know, before he passed. Um, so what's your I, current I, financial I like, situation outside I'm of that? I'm working full time. Yeah, I'm working full time. You have kids? Um, 
I have, well, I do have kids, but they're adults now. The youngest is 22. Okay, so no one's relying on you. Uh, no, no. And you're able to cover all the bills on your own, with your own income? No, my daughter and my son-in-law live here too, as well as my son, and um, they're helping me with the mortgage. Um, And I'm pretty much paying part of the mortgage plus utilities by myself. Okay. And do you have any other debt? Uh, the only, no, I just paid off my car last week. Good. Oh, good. Congratulations. Good. So just, yeah. just the mortgage is left plus this weird outstanding collections debt. Correct. And I have no credit cards, never had any, I, you know, no other anything. Okay. Just the mortgage. Well, I, I would try to do some digging to see, you know, on that credit report, what's in your name. See if you can find any documents from the financial statements um, that were in his name. Yeah. Have you looked into that? Um, I have not. Um, I he kept everything, so to go through stuff, it you know would take me a while. But um, and I you know I work like I said forty hours a week, so it's just you know like I need to like just sit down and go through all the papers that he's kept. Yeah, maybe on a yeah. Saturday have the kids help because I know it's going to be hard because sure. you're, you're you're sort of re- reopening the wound in a sense as well. Right. Is your yeah. hunch, Maria, that this is a, an additional mortgage on your current home, or are you thinking there could be another property out there? No, it's got to be on this. Okay. Well, I mean, the address they're sending it to is this. It says in regards to property address. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So it so. could have been a HELOC that he took out. I mean, I'm, you know, I don't know. Yeah, so no whole, idea. Yeah. So, yeah, I think getting to the bottom of that. But, again, it, it may be a rabbit trail to actually get to the the actual, you know, lender that's holding it. Right. Um, and where it originated from, not just the right. – Yeah, not just in, the one in collections. So, exactly. um, yeah. But yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm guessing it's got to show up on that credit report. And here's the deal. If the debt collector can't verify that debt, they have to stop contacting you about it and they have to let the credit bureaus know to remove that from your report. Okay. So I'm not saying that's the case. This could be a legitimate right. debt that you owe mm-hmm. and maybe you can end mm-hmm. up settling down the line. But right now okay. we just got to get, we got to do some homework and get some info. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I just, you know, he never said a word to me about it. So I, I have no idea. And I just, you know, oh. like I said, I just keep getting the papers and I'm like, okay, I don't know what to do with this. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I'm just concentrating on keeping the bills, you know, the utilities on and, you know. Are you doing a budget with time. your income coming in? I haven't really, but I know I need to. I just, you know, I don't spend like frivolously at all. I do, you know, I just get what I need to get and that's it. I don't, that's why I don't have credit cards because I'm like, if I can't afford it, I'm not going to buy it. So. Wise, wise woman. Well, we're going to hook fine. you up with every dollar premium as well to help you make a plan for every one of those dollars. And what you'll do is list your income at the top and then list all of your expenses and start with the priorities, your food, utility, shelter, transportation, insurance bills. And then whatever's left, we can start attacking this, maybe this debt with that's in collections. And uh, I hope that helps. And we'll definitely hook you up with a free financial coaching session with one of our Ramsey trained financial coaches. So hang on the line and uh, our friends will pick up and make sure that they hook you up with every dollar and that coaching session. And I'll make sure for the rest of you listening, if you're curious about that blog, if you have uh, debt and collections, we'll put a link in the show notes and description to that blog article on our website. What is a debt validation letter? It's got a lot of great information there that can help you sort through this. Because these collectors, Rachel, when they start calling you, you start to panic and you just write them a check or give them access to your account. And that's a very dangerous move. You want to stay in the driver's seat. Yeah. And they can be scary and intimidating. You know, you're like, oh my gosh, it's in collections. Like even that word sounds so scary, but you have a lot of power in that situation and to figure out what to do. And yeah. and And let this be a lesson to all of you. Talk to your spouse about what is going on in your financial world. Share all the documents with them. We call it a legacy drawer. Create a document base with everything you need, every account number, the passwords, whatever it is, so that they're not left grieving while trying to figure out what the heck was happening with the finances. That's a scary place to be. We're thinking for you, uh, thinking of you, Maria. Hope you can navigate this and get to the other side. This is The Ramsey Show.
Hey guys, Ramsey Solutions started small and grew fast. Because of that rapid growth, there were times when our systems slowed us down. That's why we switched to NetSuite. It works for us and it'll help your business too. Whether you're starting on a card table like I did or you're well on your way to becoming a multi-million dollar company, NetSuite can scale with you and help you communicate and plan better. Because you know your day-to-day -day up and down and sideways, but accounting, analytics, and supply chain are on another level. So maybe you're just not tech savvy. That can be okay. NetSuite will help at your speed and whatever your situation. More than 37,000 companies use NetSuite to know their numbers and their business better. So check out NetSuite today and find out how they can help you become the business you want to be five or 30 years from now. And right now, you can download NetSuite's free KPI checklist designed to give you consistently excellent performance at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, joined by my co-host this hour, Rachel Cruz. We also co-host a, I would say, a more fun show called Smart Money Happy Hour. <laughs> you know. I think, uh, yeah. F From an entertainment is more, perspective. It's more of Smart Money Happy Hour, yeah, I would say. It's what we aim for. And so we've got a, a cocktail or mocktail in hand, and we talk about money through the lens of what's going on out in the world and pop culture, and we have a great time. It's, All the trends happening out in the world and yes. how it relates to money. It's great. We have, so, a, we have a good time. We have a good time. It's, it's got a, a cult-like following, Rachel. We love <laughs> meeting people all over the world. You were in Disneyland, and people were like, I love Smart Money Happy Hour. They said, I love you in George. They called you out, George. Yeah. It's nice to be loved once I in a while. I was while. getting on the Barnstormer <laughs> in Magic Kingdom. Someone was like, Rachel, I love you and George on the happy hour. I was like, thank you. You just wave like you're the, the you. mayor of a small town <laughs> from the I ride. In, I was in line. <laughs> That's so fun. Well, hey, we're glad you're here. We're glad you're with us. It's an open phone uh, line at 888 And we've got a, a segment we've done once before on the show. Uh, I think you and Jade did it, Rachel? Yes, we did. It was so fun. Pick a side. Yeah. I've never been a part of one of these, but we have a, a caller with someone else on the line, and we have to hear them both out, hear their case, and then you and I have to pick a side. I love it. Are we ready for this one? Oh, I can't wait. All right, let's find out what's happening with Kiri and Diana in Columbia, South Carolina. Welcome to the show, guys. Hi. You Thank ready you. to battle? <laughs> we are. Okay, what's the, what's the situation? Who's going to go first? Uh, uh, Diana wants me to, to spell it out and then she'll correct or any inaccuracies. Um, <laughs> I like this. Uh, so we, we have a Stanley situation. A, a what? Um, you a, know the, Stanley a Stanley situation. Oh, situation. So like you the, know the Stanley cups? Yeah, yes. not, not the hockey, like the, the mugs. The not tumbler. the hockey. The indestructible tumbler. Oh, we know. Yeah. Oh, we know of these. And they fit in your cup holder. And they have a handle and the Absolutely. straw. Absolutely. Yes. And, and they yet somehow over still leak. A little bit, you know? no, they don't. <laughs> They're very well made. Okay, so it's Stanley. Oh my gosh. All right, what's the yes. what's the problem here? So so we had a discussion. My 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 eleven year old came back from school and she said her friends have a Stanley oh. Cup. And um she wanted to buy a Stanley Cup and um both myself and Diana have done the Financial Peace University and the legacy course. So that all kicked in. And, um, and I was explaining to her why it didn't make any sense to spend $45 on a cup when you can buy one for six bucks at Walmart, you know. And um, But she misconstrued it as me saying that, you know, if she bought it, which she would buy it with her own money. So my kids are very good at saving. Oh, wow. Insisted that I add, yes. So they, uh, I get them to put a, about... 50% of what they make, um, they buy silver coins for me, um, which I get for them. Wow. And, um, and they, they save a lot. Uh, and how the how is the 11-year-old making money? 
So when they get a present, but then, you know, we've got some chickens, so they sell eggs and then they Good babysit them. other people's wow. chickens in the oh, neighborhood. Let her you know. buy this. All right, okay, never mind. What uh, a beautiful I'll, I'll little old-timey world you've created. They're I buying pay- silver coins from you and they're yes. making money from the chickens. This is like 1800s. Yes, yes. Except beautiful. she wants a Stanley and they, Cup. And they, and, they, and they take part in studies where they, they go into the university and they, they do like exercises and stuff and they get paid quite well for that. Good. Wow. Um, That's amazing. Is she in the fifth grade, yeah. sixth grade? How? What grade is she in? She's sixth grade. Sixth grade. Yes. Okay. And, okay. And they and they and they. I've got four daughters, and they're all super smart kids, and they understand they have to give a, give away some of it and sure. all of that. So okay. they do save. So that's not the problem. Okay. But I I, I went into a rant about um, <laughs> brands and um, industrial psychologists and uh, behavioral economists trying to get us to buy stuff that we don't <laughs> need and. <laughs> Maybe a little bit the over the top. Grader, but, you know, like, I, Dad, I, I just want to say She probably like, fell asleep mid conversation. <laughs> she did. Well, yes. And, <laughs> I'm, a, I, I'm a bit of a compulsive saver. I've been saving since I nine. Bet. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's great. It's a great. So she, okay, so Diana, are you yes. okay? Okay, so what's your take, Diana? So so he's saying, no, you don't need to buy this. This is this is just consumerism at its finest. And Stanley, know, they know what they're yes. doing. What do you think, Diana? So my opinion is that you need to take each situation for what it is. My kids are good kids. Like you said, she saves a lot of money. She actually has like quite a bit of guilt about spending any of her money. Um, you know, and I think that comes from the saveaholic dad. Um, so, <laughs> That's the right word. Um, she, she is just so good at saving and so when she came and she said that she wanted to spend some of her own money on this Stanley Cup I was totally for it I was like if you're sticking to your percentages of what you plan to save what you plan to give and what you plan to spend that's totally fine with me because she's working hard for money you know and like I said if I was dealing with a different situation of someone that wasn't able to save and give and things like that, then I would reconsider. But because of the type of kid she is, I think it's totally reasonable. Wow. Well, you're both very convincing. I don't know if it's your lovely accents, but I am, <laughs> I'm thoroughly convinced. Here's the funny thing. I think you're both right, and I think Diana's a little more right. I think she gets to do what she wants with I this agree. money. Oh, we even should, though I, we should have done a one, two, three, uh, pick a side. Well, here's you the went, thing. I'm Team Kiri in the sense that I'm like, I would be like, well, the, okay, the Stanley, Kiri. Big Stanley's trying to get at you with their consumer marketing and its influencers. I know. And at the you same think they're time, stupid. George doesn't like Stanley's. Uh, he thinks they're so stupid. So, yeah. And here's the deal. There's going to be things in life that you, I'm just going to go like, you know, sexist here. You men may not really understand. First of all, thank you for calling me a man. You, you, yep. <laughs> I'm not yeah. even offended. <laughs> Something that you ma- you know what I mean? There's always going to be things. There's going to be stuff that you guys do. How much you pay for your haircuts, Jordan? Whoa, like, this whoa, whoa, is so hey, crazy. Hey, like, that's, that's not the discussion here, that's Rachel. That's crazy. I know. So all that to say, all that to say, I'm with George. I'm with Diana. I'm sorry, Carrie. Especially, yep. I, thought y'all, I thought y'all were coming in and going to say that she just wants you to buy it for her. And I'm like, ooh, this is this would be a good. There's no entitlement here. Yeah. yeah. No, she saved yeah. her own money. No. And, no, and, no. and Carrie rem- and I'm saying this as a spender daughter that grew up with a dad who sounds a little bit like you. A little save a holic, if a you little. will. <laughs> but, but to give the freedom that she needs to learn. And she may regret this purchase, yes. right? She may regret it. But good for her to actually experience those emotions on her own versus, yes. you know, trying to talk them out of everything. Like, they need to make some mistakes. I did. Yes. Uh, so you're saying you buying a Stanley is a mistake, Rachel? No, I didn't say this was a mistake. I was saying... <laughs> I know it's stupid. It's expensive for a cup. I get it. I I drove my wife's car today, and what's in the cup holder? The giant Stanley. Guess who didn't have room for his little cup? Me. (laughs) So the giant Stanley was taking up the whole cup holder. It is wild, Uh, though. After, after, oh, sorry. uh, After I I saw how bad she felt, you know, and we had all these discussions and stuff, and I'm like, you know what? I might not understand lilac and fuchsia cups and the importance to an 11 year old girl. But, you know, I, I explained to her, if this is what she wants, she was worried that I was not going to be proud of her. I said, I'll oh. go out with her and buy 10. 
I'll buy 10 for her. I said, Sweet. I literally, because, you know, her, her emotional well-being is much more important than a cup. So, sure, sure. Um, but I said, you know, if we were discussing this with Diana, we got, look, we've both done FPU. Why don't we call him the expert? So I actually emailed the question. Oh, and there And that's go. how we ended up on this show. Perfect. <laughs> well, I'm so glad you emailed. Fu- Can I ask where your accents are from? Because I want one. Oh, it's South, South Africa. Africa. Oh, yeah, yeah. So just you, lovely. You just have to lovely. go live there for about 30 years and you're good. All right. <laughs> and you'll, you'll get Easy. it. Well, I, but it I, is, have I will, her listen to this call and have them say, Rachel and George said, yes. buy the cup. But I will say, you know, we have a daughter. She's in the third grade. And even some, you know, girls in her class have Stanleys. She does not because I'm yes. like, I'm not yes. going to buy that yes. for you. You know what I mean? Like, I, I love, you But know. then it becomes, well, look what my friends are driving, Rachel. I need a car like yep. that. And it becomes, yep. look at what their yeah, life so is. Yeah, so there is a precedent. And what I think what you guys have done so well is you've set a norm, right? Like the, the level of normalcy that your kids are experiencing is working hard, saving, giving, being wise. That's the norm. And if, and if something kind of is abnormal for one purchase, for one thing, and it's not the baseline... That's where I say, yeah, that's great. And especially since it's her money. So great. You yeah. guys are incredible Absolutely. parents. Incredible yep. parents. Well done, Thank you, guys. you so much for the call. I wish she, the 11-year-old could call in next time. <laughs> and let's hear her case and why she she'll needs be a, the Stanley. She'll be a millionaire You know what she's going to tell me? 21. She's going to say, well, George, it fits in the cup holder. And it that's has a handle and a straw. Dear and it, Lord, and it help really all. works, y'all. It's, Cups have it's worked nice. for centuries. Not- this is not a new invention. There's been handles on things for a long time, Rachel. Not like this, though. You won't convince me. (laughs) This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, guys, you know this, but I'll say it anyway. College is freaking expensive, and student loans are out of control. The average private student loan debt in 2023 was $55,000. So if you're in over your head with private student loan debt, don't beat yourself up. Look, we've all made mistakes with money in the past. What matters is doing something about it now. So if you're in distress with private student loans, that's private, not federal student loans, call Y-Refi. Y-Refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. To learn more about this custom refinancing option, call 844-2-RAMSEY or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Campbell, joined by Rachel Cruz. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Tom joins us up next in Las Vegas. What's going on, Tom? Thanks for taking my call. You guys have got a great call screener. Oh, thank you. We got the best in the business. We got Taylor and Christian today, and they're crushing it. They're just cackling back there, Tom. You made their day. They so, never oh, get this kind of affirmation from us, so I'm glad someone <laughs> gave it to them. <laughs> My question is regarding the collection I re- noticed I received. I had a dispute with a phone company, cell phone company, a couple of years ago. And uh, anyhow, I just kind of left at that. I got a collection letter, and I checked my credit report. It's on the credit report, and I'm going to go ahead and pay it off rather than dispute. It's about $150. My question is, how can I guarantee that they will send the paid in full to the three credit bureaus? I'd actually like to. I, what I'd like to do is send a you know a letter to them saying, "You send me back a certified letter that you will." you agree to take it off the credit report reporting agencies and I will send you payment in full. Uh, otherwise, you know, I don't want them to, I don't want it to linger for years and years on my credit report. What's your recommendation? Sure. So how are you going to pay for this? Cashier's check. Okay. And make sure that's certified mail. Okay. When you send that. Do I need to do, okay. Do I need to send a request letter of certified mail or can I just call them in? 
and call them on the phone and say, send me the letter that you'll agree to take it off. Well, they did they send you a payment agreement? Yeah. Well, they send, you know, they said you can pay over so many months or you can pay over two months or just pay it in full and I'll just pay it in full and get rid of it. Okay. Get out of my hair. Yeah, if you send the, the – make a copy of everything you send, including the cashier's check, and staple the payment agreement, the certified mail return receipt, and the copy of the cashier's check together and hold on to all of that. Okay. Now, I have heard somewhere that the collection agency can only report paid in full. They cannot force the credit bureaus to remove it completely as though it was never there. Do you know is that correct? You can dispute it on your credit report uh, once it's paid in full. And they can then remove it. Okay. After it's paid in full. Exactly. Okay. So you shouldn't have an issue there. Great. Okay. I appreciate How long does that normally take once the, the credit agency gets my payment until it's reported to the credit bureau? You know, month, I'm, I'm not sure of that specifically. I'm sure every bureau has got a different process and a different timeline, but I can't imagine it's going to be months. I would imagine it's between, okay. you know, 30, 60 days. Yeah, yeah. All right. I appreciate that very much. You've been very helpful. I Absolutely. hope you have a good weekend. Thanks, Thank you, Tom. Tom. And shout out to the phone screeners. They do they do a heck of a job. They're on the front lines, Rachel. They are. Who knows Doing the stuff work. we never even hear. It never makes it to air. <laughs> that would be a good show, though. Just, Just let a, anyone and everyone. That's our, our premium version. You can access <laughs> we should the unfiltered calls coming into the show. You pay a subscription. You can get that. Yes. <laughs> we do appreciate all of the callers. I know it can be hard to get on air, but we appreciate all of you trying your best. And Patrick made it, Rachel, all the way from New York. He made it onto the show. Patrick, what's going on? Hey, thanks so much for taking my call. I'm huge admirers of you all. I want to echo the great call screeners as well. Wow. <laughs> There's a theme hour that. now. Yeah. That's so kind. There They're very go. thankful. Yeah. They're bowing. Right. Well, thank- <laughs> well, thanks so much. So uh, we have about, my wife and I, 68000 in credit card debt. Ooh. I have 30000 in uh, a Roth IRA that's actually in cash. A stock was sold. There was really no profit made, so I believe I could take that out without penalty. So I'm wondering if I should treat that $30,000 like cash or if I should reinvest it into mutual funds to help pay down that credit card debt. Are you sure this is in a Roth IRA? Yeah, I'm positive. Is it in like a settlement account? No, it, it, it was it was invested in a stock, um, like one particular company. Uh, it made maybe two thousand dollars over the course of ten years, so not terribly great, I guess. But um, the so who cashed it, it out? Yeah. Um, uh, I did. I we sold it. But you are how old are you guys? Oh, I'm I'm thirty eight. Okay, so there must have been penalties then. No, no, no. For because the Roth IRA, I don't think they're. Oh, on your contributions. Yes, exactly. Got yeah. it. You can take out the contributions without the penalty, Correct. but it will count as income. Okay, so it would count as income then. I believe so. Yeah, so I, I would taxes. check on what happened with that transaction. But if it is sitting in cash, the damage is already done, then yes, this would just be considered you know, liquid cash that you can use to pay off debt. Okay, okay. That, that's that's kind of where I was leading towards, uh, but I'm not 100% sure what the best option Patrick, is. Patrick, what caused you guys to get $68,000 in the credit card debt? Um, being workaholics um, and, and you know, uh, door dashing your way into debt and obesity. How's that? Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So was this uh, – I'm trying to understand for the listeners – out there who may be sure. experiencing something similar. Are you saying you guys were working so hard and you were so stressed that you just sort of ate your feelings month after month? Well, I, yeah, I mean, I would say more out of, conven- uh, out of convenience. Um, it's a mixture of, of convenience of not, okay, working a lot. What period of time was this? Over how long? Uh, probably in the course of two years. That's a lot of $34,000 a year. Yeah, it also includes some medical. Uh, okay. Debt okay. Well. Okay. I was like twenty eight hundred dollars a month on DoorDash. Good. I don't think I could well, do that if I wanted to. Yeah. Well, if you, it's, it, it can happen pretty quickly if you, uh, you know. Um, and the illusion is if you make a lot of money, right? How much do you guys make a year? Combined, we're uh, we're about two hundred and fifty thousand a year. Wow. So you could clear this credit card debt without even touching the Roth IRA, but this will just help Correct. you speed it up. 
Um, I think it would help speed it up, yeah. Do you I have mean, any other we, debt? We could do that. I'm sorry? Do you have any other debt? No. Okay. Well, and I think the this... reason why the medical is on, it's on, it's, we had to use a credit card because it, it requires a reimbursement of this particular plan. It, it's a bit of a, of a, of a previous health plan. So, hmm. well, have you cut up the cards yet? Uh, we, we, yeah, we don't use them anymore. We just use a debit card now. But you still have access to it. What's connected to the DoorDash account? That's the question. Oh, the debit card. Okay. I might delete the DoorDash account altogether for now <laughs> until we get the situation under control. How's there your health? You go. Um, I mean it's 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 better now that I've, you know, gotten a physical, going to the doctor, exercising, all those sorts of things. Good. Whew. Yeah. Well, it is interesting, Patrick. We hear a correlation a lot with money and health, just in general, that when mm-hmm. you get to a point on one of those subjects that you're just like, oh, my gosh, I can't keep doing this anymore. And, you know, with your money, we can't keep doing this. We have $68,000 in credit card debt. We, you know, and you kind of have this awakening to change what you've been doing with money and doing something different that you guys are, you know, you're doing your debit card and, um, you know, working your way out right. of debt, which is awesome. And how much that correlates to ev- other parts of your life. A lot of people say, of you know, that they... Yeah, want to make changes in their health. They want to make changes in their marriage. Like you, it's amazing when you get one part of your life under control. It really is a domino effect in the others, and that's what you're experiencing, which is so exciting because I think that it's a it's a new year, and uh, you guys are creating some great habits. So I'm I'm proud of you guys. Out of a dark curiosity, what's the APR on this on these cards? Um, I think it's it varies depending on the credit card, but it's probably like a yearly interest of about twenty percent. So you're going to look at fees like up to two thousand dollars a month, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. combined. That's mm-hmm. the scary so, part. So, yeah. So part of me is wondering if I just have that chunk of cash, you know, can I throw it at the debt? You know, that how many cards off. is it across? Uh, it's uh, three cards. Okay. Yeah, I would. I'd use that thirty k so, and attack the smallest one first, and then if it covers the yeah, next right. one, go that way. Yeah. And you'll free up the payments mm-hmm. along the way. Yeah, that sounds great. I, and I mean, we've been working on it already a bit. So, like, the number was even a little bit higher. But Ooh. because of, you know, getting the budget under control, uh, doing all those things, you know, getting rid of the credit cards, using the, um, using, you know, paying for everything in cash, it, it kind of got us. And it can happen quickly, right? Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a slip- from- it is a slippery slope yeah. for sure. Yep. But using okay. your own money will always change the game. You can't go into debt. If you uh, run out of money in the bank account. And that's, that's right. why I stick to debit. Lesson Amen. Learned. Amen. Brother George. Ooh, man, <laughs> this hour took my breath away, Rachel, but it was fun. You did a great job. You so, handled it. So did you. you so did the phone screeners. And shout out to the phone screeners this hour. Taylor it's their and Christian show. Christian just killing it. It's their world. Killing We're just it. living in it. This has been The Ramsey Show. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create amazing relationships. I'm George Campbell, joined by Rachel Cruz. Open phones at 888-825-5225. You call in, and we'll give you our advice. Not telling you you'll like it, but we will give it to you. Unfiltered, unbiased, just wanting to help you take the right next step and live your best debt-free life. Reagan joins us up first in Knoxville, Tennessee. Reagan, what's going on? Hey, George and Rachel. I am a little sad that I can't talk to you guys for five hours, but I'm excited to be here. <laughs> hey, five minutes is better than nothing. <laughs> All righty. Well, I've got my question I can read to you, so I sound a little bit smarter. Okay. Use some big words. I have been, okay. <laughs> I have been married for two years, and we are currently gazelle intense paying off my wife's nursing school debt. As we plan for the future, we are eager to bring children into our family. We both come from single-income families, and we've always imagined that that's how our lives would turn out as well. In fact, we borderline consider it part of our faith to build a family with a stay-at-home mom. I work as an entry-level construction estimator, making 55 k and I can make this decent money down the road. 
Uh, it scares me to think about trying to save for a down payment or afford large purchases on my income if we were to have a child soon, but I also don't want to wait four to six years for my income to go up to start having children. Do we need to put off our goal of having kids soon, or do we need to have more realistic expectations about my wife's future employment? Oh, that's a good question. Well, let's start with this nursing debt. How much does she have? About 50. Okay. Any other debt you guys have? Nope. Is she working right now, Reagan? She is. She's just barely graduated nursing school. She's making about the same as me. Okay. Okay. 55K. Okay. So let's say the household income is about 110? Yep. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Reagan, I will never tell someone not to start a family, get married, you know, big life decisions. Um, I would tell, you know, I would never tell someone not to do those. And instead, you should pay off debt or you should do all these other things we talk about. I mean, I think... Um, when you want to start a family, you guys start a family and people want to wait until they're financially stable and all of that. And, and I hear that and I, and I get it, but also I think sometimes that finish line can move and you can feel like you're never really there. And then you look up, you're like, oh man, it's been four years and we've wanted a family and we haven't started. Well, because we're out of debt. Should we wait till we have a house? Okay. Well then we'll wait another three years so we can get the yeah, down payment being yeah. a house because a baby can't survive in a rental for some reason. So there's a lot of just weird things that happen along the way. And that's why we tell people, Hey, if you want to have a family, go for it. Go it might be it. A, a little more difficult, but it's not going to ruin your life by any means. It's only going to be a, a blessing and a joy. So what I would be looking at is uh, number one, the actual budget and reality of the numbers is, hey, if we have a kid and you're staying home, can we actually cover all the bills? Can we cover the four walls, food, utility, shelter, transportation, insurance, and still hit our financial goals? So I'm wondering, can we knock out the debt while she's working and then stay home? And that's the goal is to um, have her debt paid off in the next six months is what we're tracking towards. And uh, then after that, I mean, we're just – there's a lot of big decisions we can make. We both need, we both drive old cars and we want to save up for a house and things like that. Um, and it's just trying to balance, you know, the excitement of being out of debt and taking the next step with taking on these extra responsibilities that might harm our income. Yeah. Well, I mean, getting the emergency fund in place once you're debt free is going to be important. If you want to upgrade the cars with cash, that would be a future goal. And then beyond that, you might need to rent for a few years until you have that down payment saved up. And the problem is a lot of people have a kid and they all of a sudden go, we don't have any room now. We have to go buy a house even though we're broke. And so I don't want you to fall into that trap. So can you stay where you are renting right now even through the first kid? Uh, That's the plan. I think what scares me more is just having the space in my income after we have a kid, if we were to go to a single income, to then save up for a down payment. Yeah, it will just take you longer. I mean, that's you guys will just be in order for one goal to happen, which is for her to stay home with a baby, then other goals are going to have to shift, right? I mean, and, and it's a priority thing for you guys. If it's more of a priority for her being home, then the house is going to be down below that or if you guys say no maybe she she works you know four days a week or something and you know or works you, through the first baby and once we have baby number two then she's gonna stay yeah or figure you know. you know or you know you guys decide something else because the house you know that's more important then that goes first and then you know her being home goes second but it's up to you guys i mean yeah it's, it's what you guys value right and then out of that is where you say okay now we have to make these decisions and and no so um so it may mean you know move into a to a cheaper area it may mean you know some other things when you go down to one income but that's what you guys are gonna that's what you guys value is what i heard is that right that's correct yeah so i think yeah and i think you know it's one of those things Reagan. like it's um it's kind of that adult, <laughs> adulting situations that you get in and you say, okay, what is best for our family? And what's best for us may not be the same as X, Y, and Z person down here. So you may be watching X, Y, and Z family do things that you guys may not be able to do on that one income right away, right? Not that you can never do anything on one income, but it mm-hmm. will just take longer. And I think that the more confident you guys are in that conviction is it's going to, that's going to, that's going to create, uh, the board at which you, you know, you have your life in. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's perfect advice. Yeah. All of these actions, Reagan, they'll, you know, they have a blessing and a consequence. The blessing is my wife gets to stay home. The consequence, our income got cut in half and it's going to take us five more years to get a house. 
And so we have to weigh what's more important to us, what are the priorities right now, because we can't have our cake and eat it too. I wish I could snap my finger and you guys are debt free with an emergency fund, living in your dream home. <laughs> She's staying home. Everything's great, but there's going to be sacrifices. That might mean you work a side job for the next three years. And me, yeah. And Reagan too, just know this, you know, when it comes to the, and I know you guys don't have the baby right now, but if that is in her that she wants to be home, um, you don't regret that stuff. I don't, I, you know, that that's, you know, you don't regret being home with your baby if that's where you want to be. Now I, I work, right. So I'm, I'm, I'm not in that situation, but I did pull back some from work a few years ago to be home with the kids more. And I look back on that. I'm like, I don't regret that. Right. There may have been some opportunity cost at work or whatever it is, but I don't regret that. So making decisions about things like family and kids and all of that, if you have the option and that's the decision you make, I don't think people, I don't, I don't think you'll regret that because she always will have the ability to go back to school. Now she got a freaking expensive degree yeah. to be a nurse and she's going to go home. So all of you 18 year olds out there, that's what happens. You go to school, follow your dream, four, go $50,000 in debt. And now you want to stay home and be a mom, you know, and, 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 you know, it's hard. Just just be aware of these decisions. And I want to give a shout there. out to all the moms out there. Rachel, there's so much mom guilt on either side. If you should be at home. You should be working. You should do this. And I just feel for the moms out there struggling with these decisions. Yeah, and That's some moms easy. don't have the choice either, right? That they yeah. have to they have to be working. Um, you know, so it, it it is. It's a it's a it's a complicated thing at times, George. You've got to do what's right for you and accept that there may be sacrifices needed. Yes. And you guys just had Mia, your little yeah, baby. She's and just and I think too, old. you could plan as much as you want. And then once the baby's here, things shift. You may be like, get 100%. me out of this house a little bit, please. <laughs> like, can I, can I yeah. get out? Or you may be like, no, I want to be here more. So um, you can plan, but sometimes those, that plan even changes. Amen. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything, from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Visit Blinds.com to get up to 40% off. That's Blinds.com. Rules and restrictions may apply. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, joined by Rachel Cruz. If you want to check out more uh, great shows from The Ramsey Network, be sure to check out Rachel Cruz on YouTube and podcast and search George Camel with a K on YouTube and Spotify and you'll find uh, my channel over there. We're making, what, three three episodes a week for both of us on top of Smart Money Happy Hour? Oh, yes, yes. Wow. And on top of this show. It's a lot of... You can't ever say that we're not... People are like, you need Smart Money Happy Hour every day. I'm like, listen, we got 19 <laughs> hours of content coming at you guys. That's plenty. We really, we... Go be it's... with your families. Go on a walk. Listen to some music. <laughs> You know, we'll be with you once a week. <laughs> hey, well, we've been getting a lot of questions about taxes and I get it that taxes can be real confusing. And so to help you get a better handle on them, let's unpack a question from one of our listeners. What's the difference between a tax deduction and a tax credit? 
Ah. Uh. It's not a trick question, but people get confused. I, I just uploaded a video about taxes for beginners on my YouTube channel today. Oh, yeah. I went on the street on Broadway in Nashville. The answers were hilarious. Oh, like asking just like basic. Yeah. If they knew the difference between deductions and credits. Many yeah. people were like, well, a tax credit, credit's like dead. So oh, I was no. like, no, it's de- Okay. So here it is. Well, it's fa- fair context clues, if right? If I, I mean, was on, yeah. Yeah. It's fair. a decent guess. Here's what tax credits actually are. Uh, they cut your tax bill dollar for dollar. So if you end up owing $1,000 in taxes, a $500 credit will slash your bill another 500 bucks. And a tax deduction, on the other hand, is more on the front end. It lowers your tax bill by lowering your taxable income. So you simply subtract the deduction from your income. Less taxable income equals Lex, less taxes owed. So deductions reduce how much of your income is taxed. Credits reduce the actual tax bill on the back end. So if you're confident about filing on your own, we've got a great tool for you, uh, Ramsey Smart Tax. You can find that at RamseySolutions.com slash tax. That's no-nonsense tax software. We're not going to try to sell your data and sell you debt like the other guys. It's low upfront pricing. We're not going to nickel and dime you. And if you want to work with a pro, you can connect with a tax pro who's Ramsey Trusted Again, at RamseySolutions.com slash tax. Well, it's time for our question of the day, Rachel. Would you do us the honors? Oh, yes, I will. Today's question comes from Mark in Florida. I'm 64 years old, retire, a retired executive with an encore career, happily married, no debt, and $3.4 million net worth. I want to lease a new Maserati that will cost a total of $60,000 over three years. My wife is against it since this provides no financial benefit. Our net worth and liquidity will continue to grow. Can I afford this lease? Wow. Hmm. Uh, This is an interesting one. Yeah, can you afford it? Yeah, you can afford it. You could afford a lot of stupid decisions. Yeah, I was like, you could afford it. Doesn't mean you should do it. Uh, It's just that, yeah, I mean, leasing a car, it is the most expensive way to finance a vehicle. And it's going to be you basically just renting a car for three years. So, um, I mean, if... (sighs) It hurts my heart that you're just going to blow 20 grand every year for fun and then still have to get a different car three years from at now. the end of this so That's I, the hard part. I wouldn't do it just because obviously we don't talk we don't we, we don't affirm leasing and all yes. of that if they're gonna um, if they have a 3.4 million dollar net just worth go buy they're gonna it. Pr- you just purchase it in cash and uh you know you'll you'll still end up in a better spot because guess what after three years you can go sell that maserati yeah. for you know, how you, much is a new Maserati, George? Google. Ooh, well, Google you know, it, it depends on the on the. I know you. Model. I know you know cars so well, George. Well, I've Just been in the market, guy. Rachel. You've been in the market, been test driving I'm some Maseratis. I'm so excited. I bet I'm going to get ads now for Maserati. They're going to be like, "This guy wants a Maserati." I, badly. I know. I'm terrible at guessing prices of stuff. What would you guess they they go for? Because <sighs> like a Maserati, they have I, some... I don't even know what it looks like. I need to see what it looks like. You know like. the. It's oh got, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, we're gonna go. Here we go. We're okay. gonna go. Hey, don't hold on, don't tell me. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess. Um, two hundred. No. Oh. I mean, I'm sure what? you can soup it up. Oh, one fifty. But for like their their normal, you know, uh, sixty three. No! 85 and it goes up for there now it's really it's starting from and most people that buy these they want to soup them up with extra features and you know do custom sixty three thousand yeah. dollars we got a guy that had a honda civic loan for sixty thousand tell me about with it with me and jade you know no. what i might do here's really? the thing these like ultra luxury cars they tend to depreciate and so what i might do if i'm in his shoes is take use... that 60 grand and go what used maserati can i get for 60 grand well that just go buy a new or car, buy a brand dude. New one. Just go buy it. This go doesn't feel it. like it's worth the juice. Ain't worth the okay, squeeze on. But this I lease. feel like SUVs. When we were in the when we were in the car shopping season after we had our third, we ended up with a um, Odyssey minivan. Mm-hmm. But we did look at, at SUVs. Like you know, you look at you know um, Suburbans. You look at all of those. Some of those, those big are boys. One tw- I mean, those are like. A hundred thousand, like brand new. It hurts my soul. So I don't understand how Maserati, I'm, I'm just shocked. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm so shocked. Should I go get a Maserati? George? I think Should it's we time. Go? <laughs> this has now become an ad for Maserati. <laughs> Anyways. All right, Mark in Florida, go get you a Maserati. Pay I'm for it in at, cash. Don't lease it. I'm looking at slightly used Maseratis. They're going anywhere from forty to $60,000, maybe $70,000 for 2023. 
So if I'm him, I'm going to take that 60 and just go buy one in cash. Golly. What are, just, they, what are the other cars that are like insane, though? Why did I jump I mean, to like... Are you thinking like Lamborghinis? Oh, yeah. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. Bugatti? <gasps> There you go. I've heard of those. There you okay, go. Okay, maybe that's what I was thinking of. Are those like 200 or am I just crazy? Are there any cars yeah. for 200? <laughs> I mean, like a Ford GT is like the $300,000. Okay, okay, so okay. depending so on the model. Okay, all right, all right. You well, know. we're not but, car experts. Yeah, obviously. I don't want to go too far before the car bros come at me, Rachel. They're very aggressive. <laughs> so yeah, leasing, it's a bad idea. You're just renting it and you're prepaying the depreciation on behalf of the dealership while they make a whole bunch of money. And the interest rate is hidden in the lease. You don't even know yes. what you're paying interest wise. Like, yeah, it's just not. That's the craziest part about leases. They don't legally have to disclose it because technically it doesn't count as a loan. Oh, is how they ma Okay. That's how they get away with it. Interesting. Yeah. So they just bake it into the price. And so you think you're getting a deal, but really you're just renting very expensively. Yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> All right. There you go, Mark. You do what you want. Go get a brand new one for 63000 apparently, is what we just learned. But the key word here is my wife is against this. That would be all it takes for me to go, all right, we're not doing it. If you're not in agreement on this fina big financial yeah. decision, don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair, too. All right. We did it. We figured it out for Mark. Whew. All right. Let's go to Florida. To Tampa we go. Alex joins us there. What's going on, Alex? Hey, guys. Thanks for uh, taking my call. Sure. How can Rachel and I help? Alex, do you own a Maserati? I wish. Uh, <laughs> we'll get you there. <laughs> How can we help? Yeah. Um, so my question is, um, so about a year, more than a year ago, uh, January of last year, I got a new job that doubled my income. Um, awesome. And when that happened, before I knew you guys existed, I uh, I started the debt snowball kind of on my own. I was like, that just makes sense. I'll pay off the low stuff first. Oh, good. Um, so fast, fast forward a year, and I found you guys somewhere in there and um, the baby steps make sense. And so I mean, I started budgeting and planning for that. Um, but with my career, it, it's a little volatile. Um, there's been a lot of layoffs lately in the industry. And I'm a little concerned that once this project is over, if it doesn't go well, I could be, you know, without a job for okay. a certain amount of time. Okay. Um, so what's your so question? My question was, should I, my question is, should I do the emergency fund first just to have a little bit of a fallback before I continue down the, the debt snowball? Um, how much are you making now? I'm, I make 110. 110. Okay. How much debt do you have? A lot. Um, three, 375, including the mortgage. Oh, okay. What about uh, outside of the mortgage? Just the consumer debt? Uh, just the consumer debt is uh, 125. Okay. What kind of debt is that? Um, a lot of it is student loans, about 60,000. Okay. Loans. The line of work you're in, Alex, quickly, because we're coming up on a break. Um, are you, would you be able to find a new job if the layoff happened? Uh, yes, eventually, but okay. there's, there's been a lot of. Um, yeah. If I were you, I would I would start attacking the debt. Uh, because the layoff, it's not it's not imminent. Like it's not that it's going to happen. It's if a it fear. Happens, it's a fear of it. You'd pause the snowball and get to work doing yep. whatever you could until you find stability. That's right. That's right. But hope that doesn't happen, man. Follow the steps. It works. Your home is probably the biggest purchase you'll ever make. And with the real estate market like it is now, you'll need a mortgage company you can trust. That's Churchill Mortgage. You guys, buying a home is not a button push. It's a process. It takes building a relationship with an expert who will dig into the details and give you peace of mind without busting your budget. Churchill is one of the highest rated lenders in the country. And they're Ramsey Trusted, because they do what's right for you. Go to churchillmortgage.com to get started.
I'm George Camel, joined by Rachel Cruz. This is The Ramsey Show. Give us a call at 888-825-5225. Kim joins us up next in my old hometown, Boston, Massachusetts. What's going on, Kim? Hey, how are you? Doing well. How are you? Good. How can we help today? Okay. So the situation is that about three years ago, uh, my boyfriend sold his house to move into mine. And the plan was to buy a bigger house for the three of us because I have a son. Uh, Obviously, the market went crazy. Don't want to buy another house. So now the thought is he's going to buy in to own my house. So he's going to give me a large chunk of money, um, put his name on the deed. I don't need to refinance because I don't want to lose my 3%, but I don't know what to do with the money. Is this deal already done? No. Okay. So I'm I'm confused. He's gonna how much is he gonna give you? He's basically buying equity About, stake in your house? Yes, exactly. Fifty thousand. Okay, what's your house worth? About four hundred. And we'll, how much equity do you have? Uh right now I have two hundred, but that's not the mortgage. What's left on the so mortgage? I uh, left on the mortgage is two twenty, and I bought the house for two seventy. Okay. Hmm. So, and how much equity put, will he actually have in the house if he does this? Uh, Let's say I'm going to play it out a worst case scenario. Let's say you guys break up. What happens mm-hmm. then? He has fifty k in the house. You guys break up. You say, "Hey, you got to get out. This is my house." I, I would pay him back the amount that he put in. The lawyers are going to drop the paperwork so that I would pay him back what he put in plus any additional equity or. Why are you doing this, Kim? Why are you Why are you doing it? We're We're going to get married, so like I don't even I haven't even really thought about like what would happen if we didn't. So it's kind so of like why not get before. married and he doesn't get put married anything and do in. it then? So he doesn't have to do anything. If you guys get married so today, get married? you're. I would not ask my future wife to be like, all right, once we get married, you pay me 50000 to live in my house now. Right. That, that's what I was thinking, too. I was like, is this crazy? Do I just tell him to put it into retirement and see yes. so when we're older that yes. like, we have a better nest egg? Well, I wouldn't even I like, say I put it in retirement. I would just say, let's pause on this whole transaction until we're married. And then once okay. we're married... You you know you can add him to the deed. You can refinance the mortgage, whatever you want to do at that point, to get him you know financially involved here and combine bank accounts. But this is a really messy situation when you um, don't legally when yeah because when you're married you have legal standing right to be able to split assets and all of that. You don't have any of that, Kim. Um, okay. So and, and it's going to be messy because you're saying 50k plus equity. Well, how much equity? Is it a percentage? Is it a number? Right, right. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, and. We're the we're on the unfortunate side of this call, Kim, that we have received your types of calls when you break up and they're like, my boyfriend, we thought well, everything you know, was going to work name out on a deed. And how do we do, you know, and it ends up just being this complete mess when you do things financially with people you're not married to. And so, um, yeah, we really advise that that keeping everything separate. And then when you guys get married, mm-hmm. then you're able to combine finances, which is awesome, because then you're like, oh, great, well, have some extra money here, you know, his name can go on the house then and you guys own that together. And, you know, you, you really see yourselves as one at that point, but I would not do anything until you're married. Okay. That makes sense. Is so this, when we do get married, what should we do? With that big good. Money? Yeah, there I go. would there hang on go. to it. Cause you, who knows what expenses you're going to have wedding. We need to do this upgrade. We need to do this. So I would leave that money. You know, if, if do you he, guys is have he, debt, yeah. Are you debt free? And is he debt free? Uh, no. Yeah. We're both debt free. I have about 50,000 and like, liquid assets right now and then you know my retirement and all oh that great stuff. awesome i would just you guys invest 15 percent of your income if you have the emergency fund he has his emergency fund keep it separate both of you invest 15 percent. any money beyond that you can just stack up and you're gonna need it in the future and if you don't let's throw it at the mortgage once you're married and he's on the the deed and the loan okay that makes sense i like that plan yeah, I, I do too. I hope we talked you off the ledge, Kim. It just scares <laughs> me every time. Not because well, we we want to be mean, but because we've just seen too much on this show, and everyone wants it to work out on paper, and then life happens, and, and things it probably get will work out, right? Yeah. You guys will, you know, you'll get married, and it all it all be great. But it's always that it's a risk when you start combining finances before you're married. Yeah, I mean, this feels like a weird episode of Shark Tank. It's like I'm going to give you fifty thousand for. <laughs> 10% equity. And I'm like, this is a love relationship, not a weird business partnership. Yeah, so yeah. 
but I- I'm pulling for you. All right, let's get to another call. We've got the time. Hadley is in Winnipeg, Canada. How exciting. What's going on across the border, Hadley? Uh, not too much. Pretty cold over here, but good to talk to you guys. <laughs> you as well. How can we help? Um, I just have a question about my truck loan. And um, me and my wife got married uh, last June. And uh, we're we're pretty young, but um, we're going to have our first kid in uh, August, this coming August. Oh, so, congratulations. Um, Thank you very much. Yeah, we're just uh, kind of debating on what we should do with our finances. Like, we we have we're in the process of putting all of our stuff together right now. And um, my truck, uh, I had I bought it a long time ago, uh, or I guess a couple of years ago. And uh, at the time, I didn't know about you guys, and it's a pretty big purchase, especially for my salary at the time, and even even now. But I've paid off quite a bit of it, and I'm just wondering if I should. I should leave it uh, and just pay off the rest or if I should um, sell it and whatever I can make off it. I think I could make a little bit off it based on how much I have paid off already. What's and then, left on uh, the loan? That into, uh, I have 22000 left on the loan. And you're saying it's worth twenty three? Uh It's probably worth more than that because, well, this is based on private listings. Uh, I don't, I can't tell you exactly what it would be worth, but I'm guessing at least twenty five. Okay, so let's say you went through with this. You sold it. You you bank three thousand dollars. Now you need another vehicle. Yeah, and then uh, the, the the problem I'm having with getting into different vehicles is everything. I've looked through a lot, and my dad he's a he works at a dealership, and he's looked for me too. He's a mechanic as well, and everything that's uh, out there is really high in price for what you're getting, and lots of it is just completely mild out at the price range that I was expecting to get into. How much do you have in savings? Uh, together with me and my wife, we have uh, about 12000 maybe a little bit more than 12000 In savings? Yeah. Okay. How much do you guys make a year? Um, she, I can't tell you exactly how much you make a year, but because she's having a kid, that will be gone right away. So that's kind of why we're debating this. I make, uh, after taxes, I make like forty one. And she's going to stay home? But what what is she going to make between now and August? Uh, she makes about a month. She makes about 1400 after taxes. 1400 after taxes? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we got about six months of her continuing to work? Yeah. And yeah, she's going to stay at home. Okay. Are you guys going to be able to cover all the bills? Yeah, I'll be able to. I'll be. I I went through on every dollar and I uh, made a budget, and it'll be tight. And that's kind of why I would like to get rid of this. Uh, I'm looking to get rid of this truck loan. And, yeah. Uh, well, with a baby on the way, there's also this element where you may want to pause the steps and stack up cash. Yeah, to make sure we have big... plenty of money. Mm-hmm. So I may yeah. wait on all of this until baby's yeah. here in August. And if mom and baby are home safe, we have a giant pile of cash. Then we can sell the truck and upgrade to the next car in cash. Yeah, that, okay, so that's thing. Hold on to the truck for now, save up cash, and then. Because unless you, the, the other thing you could do is sell the truck now, you got three thousand out of that deal. Take five thousand. Take uh, five or eight out of your savings and go get an eleven thousand yeah. dollar car that gets you around. I mean, your dad's a mechanic, so get a pre-purchase inspection from him, and uh, get a yep. reliable make and model. Yeah, but keep the rest of that money in savings. And then just stack up cash okay. from there yeah, on. Yeah, because how much is your car payment every month? Uh, for the truck? Yeah. Like my, uh, mine, yeah, it's uh, 640 a month. Woo! Yeah, I would get rid of the truck. I would do that. I would do what George said. Okay. Take, a, take, take a couple That's thousand bigger. out of the savings. That'll and add an extra 3,800 bucks to your life. Exactly, yep. I'd get rid of it today. Here. And then don't do anything else big. Wait till the baby's here. And then you guys have your emergency funds basically funded, which is awesome. Yeah. You keep saving on that. And then you got yeah. no debt, emergency awesome. fund, and a, a different car with no payment on it's it, my great. friend. Great. Congratulations. It's Welcome exciting. to the baby club. <laughs> so fun. This is The Ramsey Show.
Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, joined by Rachel Cruz. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Rachel, I don't know if you know this, but there is a retirement crisis happening in America. Is there? Here's the stat that shocked me. Nearly half of Americans aren't saving at all for retirement. Oh, and no. those who do aren't saving enough. Mm. So for those of you, maybe you're in your 40s or 50s, retirement isn't a far off dream at this point. It's a fast approaching reality. And we get tons of questions from people asking, do I have enough money to retire? How is this actually going to work? And people that listen to the show, they want to retire with dignity. It's a goal. But sadly, many people, they're not that serious about saving or for retirement. They haven't made it a priority. So yeah. let's get a benchmark. Uh, of what the average person in their 40s and 50s has saved okay. for retirement. You ready? According to a recent survey or a study done by Ramsey Solutions, the average American in their 40s has an average balance of $93,400 saved for retirement and contributes 8% of their income towards retirement. Wow. The average American in their 50s has an average balance of $160,000 and contributes 10% of their income into retirement. So with those averages, though, it's still it's not enough. No. So here's the deal. If you're doing these five things in your 40s and 50s, you are not serious about saving for retirement. So we're going to call this five signs you're not taking retirement seriously. Number one, you have no goals. Oh, man. I know. It hurts to hear, but we've realized, Rachel, retirement is not an age. You don't just get to retire at 60 right? because the government said so. It's a financial number, and you need to know that number. And you can use our free retirement calculator to do that on our, at RamseySolutions.com and set a goal for retirement savings. Now, yeah. obviously, we have no magic eight ball to go, well, you're going to have $4.8 million if you just do this. We don't know what the market's going to do. Sure, but we do sure. know if you consistently invest over time, we know what the average track record has been of the stock market with mutual funds that you'll have a good nest egg. That's right. Uh, next, What's the when next you sign? know that you're not serious about retirement is that you're not saving 15% of your income. We the just average, saw that in the stats. Yeah, the average salary for Americans in their 40s is around $59,000. And if you started investing 15% at age 40 and did that every year until you retired, you would be a millionaire by 65. Wow, from 40 so, to 65, it's still possible. Yep. Making 59,000 and if you never get a raise. And 15% of your income. So this is why we always say in the baby, steps to pay off your debt first, get your emergency funds, and then you actually have money to do 15%. Because I think for a lot of these- They're just doing know, too many things at once. They're trying to pay off debt. Yeah, they don't have the cash to be able to do it all. That's right. Away. That's right. That's a huge problem. All yeah. right. Next sign you're not taking retirement seriously, you still have consumer debt. You're still hanging on to that wah, student loan, wah. the credit card balance that you were working to pay off. Well, we did the HELOC, too, for that pool because we needed the pool for the kids. And here's the thing. Debt is actually just borrowing from your future, which is not a good plan if you want to retire in the future. So use the debt snowball method. It's the one you hear about on this show, smallest to largest balance, regardless of interest rate, and focus on paying off all consumer debt other than your mortgage. And what that does is free up debt payments that you can now use there you go. to invest that $700 truck payment. It's a beautiful thing. Amazing. It is a beautiful thing. Uh, next, one of these, this is why you're not serious about retirement, is that you overspend on non-essential costs of living. Cost of living is the top reason people don't save for retirement. The average American spends $1,500 on non-essential oh, items every goodness. month. It's almost $18,000 a year on things like eating out, impulse purchases, and subscriptions. So cut your cost of living. That's true. And we had a call earlier, Rachel. A uh, guy had spent what was it, sixty four thousand sixty eight thousand dollars on credit cards, largely from door dashing. Yes. From using DoorDash to get food out of convenience. Yes. So these non-essential costs, the subscriptions, the door dashing, the Uber Eats, whatever it is, you know, pick your your poison. Right. It's at, it adds up every single month in wow. compounds. So you got to cut things out. That's right. And that's hard to do, right? We I mean, we talked to so many people here on the show that they cut their cost of living way down to get margin to pay off debt and they do the sacrifice. I mean, they do it all. So it is possible. It's not always fun. But then on the on the flip side, you really realize, oh my gosh, I have so much crap and stuff that we just don't need. We don't need the 18 subscriptions that, we're, that we're paying stuff. out. I mean, if you have you ever passed a garage in your neighborhood and you can't put a car in there, it's just become a storage just unit stuff. of just crap that we yes. might use one day or we used to use yep. or it was stuff from grandma and we just can't get rid of it because it's sentimental. I'm like, guys, we have an obsession with stuff. All the things. Yep. All right. Last sign you're not taking retirement seriously. You knew we were going to say it. You're not doing a budget. 
Mm. Having Mm -hmm. a monthly budget is the foundation of winning with money. Budgets are not for broke people. They're not for when you have money. It's for people who want to have money and want to keep that money. You got to know where every dollar is going. And you can sign up for our free budgeting app at everydollar.com. Every dollar is named after the uh, zero-based budgeting method where you give every dollar a name. Yep. Income minus expenses equals zero. I will forever be thankful for, for budgeting because I am such a spender. And we were doing our every dollar app because it's the it was the end of the month, oh, yeah. right? We're about to we're starting a new month, and I was closing it out, and those dang transactions just kind of kept coming in. I'm like, crap, 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 and I'm sitting there, and it's just it just keeps you accountable. So you're right, it's not Amazon, like, Amazon, even Amazon, on Baby Target, Step Seven, Amazon. you want to be yeah, <laughs> you want to be Venmo, Venmo, Venmo. You, you want to be doing a budget because you want to be able to say this is where my money's going, and it is. It's like a mirror in front of your face. I mean, like this is what I'm doing, and you're actually seeing it. And if you're not budgeting, so much money just slips away, and you don't even realize it. You really don't realize it. So, being accountable in that way, it is so good. It's so good. That's huge. And what's beautiful about investing is you don't have to overcomplicate it. I mean, we've got a Roth 401k here at Ramsey, so. You can do all 15% of your investing into that Roth 401k through your employer. And uh, it's if you just invest a menial amount, I mean, we're talking a few hundred bucks a month, which may sound like a lot if you're drowning in debt payments and you don't right. have a few hundred bucks. But most people, if we got out of debt and we had the emergency fund, we can find a few hundred bucks to invest. Yeah, that's right. But if you invest 15%, goodness gracious, you can build some serious wealth while having margin to help cover kids' college, and pay off the house early. And when you're in baby step seven with no mortgage payment, you can increase investing. Yes, that's right. And build exponential wealth. And so I just, it's, I have less empathy for people that say, well, you can't be a millionaire today, Rachel, because it's easier than ever. If you just get this on autopilot, start as early as you can. Yep. Best time to plant the tree was 20 years ago. Next best time is today. So, you know, I feel like the old guy. Yeah, that was a grandpa saying, It George. is. That was but a... it's, I love it because it's... just like, listen, I get that you're 45 and wish you got this stuff right. sooner, but it's not an excuse to not invest. Well, and the reality is it's going to happen. Like retirement, right? If At some God, point, you God won't willing, be able to that you, Yeah, that you, that you, you know, live up to that age. I'm like, you're going to want to retire. So you'd rather have some money the nothing. So starting that, but it's creating new habits. It's creating a new mindset. If you're not doing it now, putting that extra, you know, a few hundred dollars away, it, it, it can feel like, oh my gosh, like this, this feels scary, or I don't know if we can do this, but there is something powerful about actually doing the action. And once you start doing it and it becomes the norm, then you're not thinking about it again. Cause you're like, exactly. oh yeah, this is just what we do. It becomes a part of your identity, right? The atomic habits. He talks yeah. about that. That it, it's an identity thing. If I am a person that saves for retirement, that's and who I am. The amazing part is you just over time learn to live on that smaller amount of money that ends up in your bank account. Yes. Because 15% already left your paycheck before it ever, my bank ever saw that's it. That's right. That's right. So you just learn to live on that smaller amount, live on less than you make. We teach that all the time. And I know future George is going to be real happy about this. I always say that future Rachel's going to be bougie. Yes. I can feel her. I can feel feel and, the nice And do trips. not rely on social security. That's going to be icing on the cake. Gravy icing yes. if you're in Canada. If it's even there when we're there, George, have you read all these Oh, articles? yeah. They're I saying, mean, hey, it's going to be down to 80% by 2034, and it could be gone. Leave I know. know, y'all. How scary is that? I'm like, what are we doing? So anyways, they, yeah, depend on yourself. And you guys can do it regardless of what age you are. Start this There's now. There's no reason Start to call now. us at 64 and go, I have zero in retirement. What do I do? I know. And people do, though. And like they go, it's... oh, and I can't work anymore. Well, now's a, t- a tough time to be calling us. Get a time machine because <laughs> I don't have a magic, you know, silver bullet that's going to help you retire with dignity and live all your retirement dreams. Yep. So that's my plan is have more than I need. And then I can, you know, leave it as an inheritance to my children's children. That's right. And cover their colleges. Quoting scripture. Did you see that uh, lady who donated to the university a billion dollar donation to the medical school i did see that it's amazing yes who was she i, I didn't read the article she was but a, I did a see board it. member and professor okay. and her husband um was very well to do left her a bunch of money and she said oh. you know what he said do what i want with this i'm going to give a billion dollars so that no medical student has to pay tuition ever again how incredible is that that's amazing so there you go. There you go. That's one thing to do if you're a billionaire. Bye for that school. So take retirement seriously. Go to RamseySolutions.com. We have tons of resources there. And of course, get your every dollar budget going. EveryDollar.com. Get started for free today. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. I'm George Camel. She's Rachel Cruz. Thank you to the booth folk keeping the show afloat. And you, America, will be back before you know it.
Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create amazing relationships. I'm George Campbell, joined by the Rachel Cruz this hour. The number to call is 888-825-5225. You jump in, we'll talk about your life and your money. Paul's going to join us to kick it off this hour in Orlando, Florida. Paul, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. How are y'all? We're doing well. How can we help today? Yes, sir. My family and I um, are deciding to take a gap year. So we are just trying to figure out if fiscally we are being responsible. Um, We have followed Dave's plan. Um, So, yeah, so that's where we're at. We're just trying to figure out. Okay, so tell me about this gap year. What does that mean? No one's working and you're going to travel or what? Yes, sir. So my wife and I are deciding to resign from our current positions. We have three kids. We already homeschool them. So we decided to take a year off and travel the United States and possibly abroad. So we've budgeted for it. It's just, you know, part of American culture tells us to continue to work and build wealth, build wealth. And, you know, sometimes lay this out for us. So what's your net worth and how much are you guys making right now? So combined, my wife and I make about 160000 a year. Okay. Um, we're debt-free, so we've paid off the house a few years back. Oh, awesome. wow. So, um, so I don't know. I'm, net worth was probably three-quarters of a million, I would say, when it's all combined. Okay. And what's this year off going to cost you guys? Have you run the numbers on the real numbers? Yes, sir. We are looking at about $100,000. Okay. And you're going to keep your house? Yes, sir. We're keeping our house, so we would like to come back to a paid-off house. We have paid-off cars when we come back, and we're leaving our jobs on good terms. So as of right now, we don't you know. Nothing's absolutely guaranteed, but we have commitments from both, from at least my employer, saying that it's an easy transition back. That you could come back and make the same amount of money? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, and my wife is probably considering stopping working at this point. Okay. Yeah. Like she, she would just not go back to work and you guys would be fine. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. How much okay. you guys have saved? So total savings, um, a little over a hundred thousand outside of the budgeted amount for the gap year. Oh, so you have a hundred thousand plus another hundred thousand? Yes, sir. Wow. What's the other hundred thousand for? Well, we just, we like the emergency fund. So yeah. we just... Want to make sure that we're able to um, just be able to be comfortable when we get back. And just in case the jobs don't work out, we we have something to fall back on. Yeah. Where are you guys going to go? So we're looking at traveling the United States. So starting in or, you know, starting home in Orlando, going up the East Coast and heading west and just doing that the whole United States and then coming back to Florida and then going to Europe for a few months. That sounds incredible. Yeah, that's awesome. Where are you guys going to stay? Is this like hotels, Airbnbs? you have an RV? We definitely don't have an RV. No, we're looking at just doing Airbnbs or hotels. Fantastic. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you get the green light from me. I don't know what Rachel thinks, but this sounds like a fun adventure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, this is why you do it. I mean, like you, this is why we say you live like no one else. So later you can live and give like no one else and... This is what you guys value and what you're wanting to do. You have the money for it. You don't have any expenses, uh, bills back home, you know, with a mortgage or anything. And so, yeah, for me, I'm like, do it. What, what do you guys do for a job? What do you do specifically? I've been, I'm a home builder. I'm oh, okay. in construction. Okay. And my wife is a nurse practitioner. Okay. That's great. I was just wondering if for some reason the job fell through when you got home, you know, how easy of a line of work are you to, to pick up something else? But that's, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm not too far removed from 2008 and the whole housing bubble there. So sure. that's why I'm I'm just wanting to make sure that the emergency fund covers us just yeah. in case something happens. We never know, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I love it. I think it's great, Paul. Stop by and see us if you come through Nashville. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, we had to save the money from from screaming, we're debt-free, so maybe on this trip we can stop by. I love it. So great. Well, congratulations, Paul. That sounds so fun. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thanks. Absolutely. I'm glad he asked for permission from us, Rachel. How cool is that? 
I know. What an adventure. Man, I have such like a free spirit in me that I'm like, oh, wouldn't that just be I know. Awesome? I just hope my kids want to hang out with me for a year. You know what I mean? Like, that's just, that's cool. The kids are excited about this, it sounds like. Yeah, I would think. I know we had some friends do this. They sold, they ended up selling their house, put everything in storage, and they just traveled the world for a year. Wow. Came back and, you know, picked back up. But I'm like, good for you. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's great. I mean, if you do it the financially responsible way, I don't think you're going to have much regrets. No, no. And as a kid, that's a really cool experience to get. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It. All right, let's go to Alex in Springfield, Massachusetts. Alex, what's going on? Hey, good afternoon. Thanks for having me. I, I think I'm scrapping my whole idea and doing what Paul is doing. That's yeah, dude, <laughs> sign me up. <laughs> Maybe we all yeah. should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so, uh, so me and my wife, we just uh, actually just had our first child. He's about a month old now. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, lots, lots of fun. We're getting tons of sleep. It's great. Um, and uh, and so we're, <clears throat> we're looking to uh, potentially sell one of our... Uh, I guess I'll only rent the property and put that towards the mortgage. And I'm also kind of curious about how and when to start saving for college and like what, what a good dollar value target might be. Okay. Do you have any other debt other than the rental property mortgage and your primary mortgage? Uh, so, so we have about $28,000 in savings and I have a $4,000 um, uh, zero percent financed loan for some AC units that we had to get because I was broke in the summer last year. Okay. Um, but that, aside from that, there's no debt except for mortgage. We paid off our student loans and awesome. And the condo is is fully paid for. So, what would you net from the rental property if you sold it? Uh, so, so I guess that's part of the question too. Is that I don't know how capital gains taxes work, but we paid off the property for seventy thousand dollars was the initial mortgage, and based on Zillow, we're looking at maybe like one hundred and forty for comps. Okay, that's what you would sell it for, and it's paid off. Uh, it's paid off, yep, and we would probably we would look to sell it for around probably one forty. Okay, so let's say you walked away with I don't know one ten or something like that. What's yep. left on your primary mortgage? So our primary residence mortgage, we owe one hundred and fifty thousand. Okay, nice. That gets you guys down a yeah. lot. I would pay off this four thousand dollars zero percent loan today. That brings your savings to twenty four. That probably is a, still a full emergency fund for you guys. Sell the rental, yes. apply it to your primary mortgage, and that'll knock it down to what, maybe 40, 30 grand left on the primary? Yep. And it sounds like you want to get out of the rental game, anyways, right now. Uh, not necessarily, but we're just kind of thinking uh, in terms of uh, saving for college and, and whether or not it's worth having that passive income while still sitting on a primary home mortgage. Yeah, well, if you go through with all this, you got the emergency fund, invest 15%, any money beyond that, let's start throwing into a 529 plan, an ESA, and saving up for college, man. Okay. I like your plan. plan. Look at that. What an exciting time. So great. The kids are priority over the rental. There's always going to be another rental, but the kids only uh, get to grow up once. That's right. I love it. This is The Ramsey Show. the Ramsey Show. I'm George Campbell, joined by Rachel Cruz. Open phones at 888-825-5225. We're pumped about a brand new event coming this May, May 10th and 11th, right here in Nashville. It's called Total Money Makeover Weekend, and the lineup includes all of the Ramsey personalities, including Dave Ramsey, including Rachel Cruz, Dr. John Deloney, Ken Coleman, Jade Warshaw, and me. I'm George. And in just one weekend, you're going to get a crash course on everything we teach about money. And this is brand new content. Of course, we're going to play the hits. You're going to hear about budgeting and beating debt and investing, but we're changing things up. This is going to be a very different event, very interactive, live Q&As. So no matter what baby step you're on, this will light a fire under your butt to keep going, to keep making progress. 
And with the first 500 tickets sold, you're going to get a copy of the Total Money Makeover signed by Dave himself. So don't wait. These will go fast. And the early bird tickets are just 99 bucks for a limited time. So get them now because the price will go up. RamseySolutions.com slash events. Start preparing for your trip in May to see us in Nashville. All right, Rachel, I got this article here from producer James, and it gives me hope. Oh, for the future. We love hope. We could here. use some of that during yes. an election year. <laughs> what is the hope, George? Here's the headline. It's pretty nerdy, but 401k millionaires and average balances rose in 2023, Fidelity says. Oh, well, that's a good thing. So retirement account balances, which took a sharp nosedive in 2022 due to market yep. volatility, have now started to bounce back. Look at that, according to the latest data from Fidelity. So the average 401k balance ended 2023 up 14% mm. from a year earlier to $118,600. And the average individual retirement account, the IRAs, also gained 12% year over year to one hundred sixteen grand. So this is very comforting. Yeah, that is great because we talked about retirement in another hour and it was not as well. People aren't saving. People so the aren't ones that doing it. The aren't ones that are saving are winning, which is great because. And that's the thing with the market too. We looked at our numbers, and yeah, twenty twenty two was like, oh uh, yeah. And then twenty three, like, okay, like we're back. I see baby. that. We're I see back. that. So this is exciting. So uh, at the end of twenty twenty three, the article says signs that inflation was cooling were not only good news for the economy, but also good news for stocks. After the S and P five hundred closed out twenty twenty three with a nine week win streak. The number of Fidelity 401k plans with a balance of a million or more increased 20% oh my gosh. in the third quarter. So there's 20% more 401k millionaires than there was thanks to just riding the wave of the stock market. Yep, just this doing This is exciting. It. Yeah, yeah, this is, the po- this is uh, a quote. These are the poster children of staying the course and taking a long-term approach. That's what we say. Which Investing we in the stock market is a roller coaster. And if you don't jump off early, you won't get hurt and you'll be blessed with a fun ride. Yep. Because here's what you see with the stock market. It goes, you know, down, but then up. it goes up, but then it goes down, yeah. then it goes yeah. up. Yeah. But over time, it moves up and to the right, which is what we like to see. Mm-hmm. That's the power of compound growth. That's right. That basket of stocks and that mutual fund, well, each of those shares grew in value and that made your, your nest egg grow. And then fear comes into play, George. Oh, you know? well, if you look you at the headlines, turn Rachel. Turn on the news and all everything, and people are like, oh, my gosh, the world's ending. We got to get out of here. And people cash out. We saw that happen a lot. People pulled out. Yeah, it was not good. Which so. is the worst time to pull out yes. when the stock market is dipping like that. And so you got to stay the course. Do not pull money out. Don't do these 401k loans. Don't do the early withdrawals. Stay the course, and you will be blessed with a solid return and a great nest egg. That's comforting. All right, let's go to the phones. Brian joins us in Manchester, New Hampshire. What's going on, Brian? Hey, this is really exciting. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Uh, sure. I feel like I'm talking to the perfect people. Wow. Um, <laughs> I'll let Ken Coleman know as soon as we're done. He's going to love that. Uh, please do. <laughs> How can <laughs> we help? I've got the money guy and I've got a mother's heart, so that's good. Uh, oh, all here together. I- very uh, stark difference from Paul from Orlando earlier in the in the uh, segment here, but uh, I am 31 years old, uh, married to a beautiful gal. We've got four children, five and under. Um, wow! And our, our, our yeah, I know. So uh, it's joyful chaos. And so our uh, only very large debt is my student loan debt for 162000 as it stands Ooh, right now. Okay. What, what do you was, get your degree in? Uh, so I'm an orthopedic physician assistant. Okay. Cool. What do you make? So uh, I last year I grossed 127 Okay. So... Uh, we have a, we have a house with a mortgage. The mortgage and property taxes together uh, is a monthly fifteen hundred dollars, and then we don't have credit card debt. We just sent the last thousand dollar check to uh, pay off my wife's car. Nice, and my congratulations! Car off. Congrats. Um, thank you. So we don't have yeah we don't have credit card debt or anything. So my question really is, to your point right before the break uh, was kids only get one childhood. And so uh, with this huge debt, we are trying to figure out the fastest way to get out of that debt. Um, And so I don't, my wife is very fearful about the idea of selling our house and going into an apartment with our four kids. Um, And, but doing that, we would have enough 
if we sold it today, we'd probably make about 200 off of it. So it's a question of do we just do that, stroke a check, pay off our student loan debt, and then go save for a house? Or do we spend like three years really working hard, putting money away in a high-yield savings account, and then three years later have about 100 k and buy a different house and sell our current home and uh, just reap the benefits from it then. I don't know that you need to get out of this house. It doesn't seem like it's on fire. Why not just pay off the student loans and stay in this house? So my only question about that was, so I I did some math, and we've probably got a $3,000 or so margin if we really uh, try to put every penny we can towards this. And what I'm thinking about is if we do that, it takes about seven years or so to pay off my student loans, where if we just save in a high-yield savings account for like three years, we'd have enough for a down payment on a slightly larger house um, and be able to sell this current house and then stroke a check and pay off my student loans all in one swoop. Hmm. So So you have three grand of margin right now? So I've got three grand of margin right now with the Every Dollar app. We're looking at it. I've only been listening to you guys religiously for about two months. So okay. So that's that's four and a half quick. years at the current rec- track, right? 36 grand a okay. year, four and a half years, that's 162. And that's margin after everything is paid, right? Food, like after you budget out your life. Right. That's what's left. Exactly. Yeah, that's what's left if we really scrounge. 2500 is probably a little more reasonable with birthdays and all that stuff for the kids. But um, And your uh, wife is, is at home with the kids? Mom. My wife's a stay-at-home mom, yeah. Okay. What, what does um, extra work look like for you, Brian, and where you work? Is there some opportunity uh, to do some so- overtime? Yeah, so I'm in the I'm in the middle of nowhere, roughly. It says Manchester, but I'm I'm quite a ways out from there. Um, and so uh, the place I work is really the only game in town. But uh, I take first call, so I get sort of an hourly rate if I'm called into the building for mm-hmm. any reason. Um, and so it would really my ability to work more is really just sort of taking more call um, and. My wife and I talked about it, and we're okay with me taking extra weeknights because it wouldn't really interrupt our life too much if our kids are sleeping anyway. Yeah. Um, so my plan is to try to increase that a little bit and try to bring home a little bit more by taking a little bit more weeknight call and, and try to, try, yeah, try to creep on this. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's what I would do. Yeah, the, the house, it doesn't, I mean, I know you guys want to move eventually, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't budge with the house right now. I mean, the housing market's just insane. If you're in a if you're in a spot that you're like, okay, we can at least and if, stay if in it for three years. the mortgage was killing you guys, if it was like a four thousand dollar mortgage, yeah. I'd say, yeah, I'll sell it. But yeah, the mortgage isn't the problem yeah, no, here. We're not house poor. Yeah, yeah you need so, to make more money. You yeah, put forty five hundred. You're and Brian, done in three years. And don't worry about your kids. They're gonna be fine. They're gonna I don't see remember their... anything before like eight or nine. Yeah, their, their sure dad is, is loving them well. <laughs> He's gonna be working hard. They're not going to live on a lot, and they're going to have fun. They want you guys. That's that's what they want in life. Not a bunch of crap. They want you guys. So Beautifully don't worry said. about your kids. You're well, setting a great example for you. them. Thanks for the call, Brian. This is The Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm George Camel, joined by Rachel Cruz. Open phones at 888-825-5225. This is your friendly reminder that you can come watch the show live. We are behind the glass like zoo animals, and there's some lovely people who traveled from all over the world to be here. We got Canada. We got a newlywed couple who just got married yesterday. And they're hanging out with us. They're choosing we, to honeymoon I mean... with us. Thank you, guys. 
<laughs> so uh, come visit us. We got free coffee and baked goods and a, and a mug, and the show is free, of course. You don't have to make an appointment, but you can always let us know you're coming at RamseySolutions.com, and our team will let you know who's on the, sh- the schedule. The schedule. In case you're hoping to see your favorite yep. Disney character, John Deloney. We'll get the... <laughs> We'll sometimes get the, oh, we thought Dave was going to be here. And oh, like, yeah. Sh- just us. I'll be honest. Sorry, there was y'all. one time a debt-free screamer was here and they thought it was going to be Dave. Oh, we had let no. them know it wasn't. It was me and John. Oh, no. There they, were tears. They're... There were tears. It was like going to Disney World and like, oh, yeah, no, no. Make, but Mickey Mouse, Mickey is Mouse nowhere, isn't out. Like, nowhere to be found. The princesses, the princesses are they're busy <laughs> today. <laughs> and you're just in tears. So And you're stuck with the mediocre like... I think we, we don't won really her know who over they are. Eventually. Oh man. But we that makes felt you bad. that makes you feel good, George. Yeah. It's fine. Really making a difference. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Benjamin's on the line in Houston and I'm sure he's happy to talk to us. How you doing, Benjamin? <laughs> Howdy y'all. Happy Friday. You too. How can we help? Uh well, a little backstory. Um I've got um seventy one thousand dollars of debt paid off. Uh good news, paid off nice. now as of the new year. Um, 60 of that was student loans, 11,000 was, uh, you know, stupid credit cards and stuff. Um, anyways, I've, um, I'm now putting, uh, I've got a matched 401k, 8%, uh, $500 a month in Roth IRA. Um, I, I'm budgeting for this year to have $30,000 in savings. And I currently have a $35,000, um, emergency fund. So the next step, um, I'm single, I'm 30 years old. The next step would be uh, pay off mortgage. However, I'm currently a renter. Um, I rent uh, $20,000 a year. And so, it, you know, it makes sense to get into a mortgage or at least a house. Um, but financially, I've been working with a realtor and really digging into these numbers. And I'm confused at what makes sense financially. Of course, the realtor, you know, is pushing me to get into a house, but um, with the interest rates and everything, a $250,000 house in Houston is going to cost me $500,000 after 30 years. And, um, you're a good number cruncher, Benjamin. What do you do for work? So, yeah, I've been, I've been, uh, I've been, uh, thinking about this for a while. Obviously a couple of years going through this uh, with you guys. I really appreciate the help. Um, I, so I'm in training and education for a vehicle manufacturer. Cool. Um, so on the road, 160 days a year. So wow. I, even to think about a house, I'm only there half a year. But anyways, well, um, it's it's hard to find a mate when you're on the road half the year too. That's that's pretty intense. Yeah, no. George is dating <laughs> dating advice that this you is didn't the ask for, Benjamin. This is the is start. Here. How old? You said you're how old? Thirty. I'm thirty. Thirty. Okay. Yeah, I, a little late start. I graduated in 2020. Hey, it's all good. You're doing great, man. Yeah. So you've got 30000 in savings apart from the emergency fund. So let's call that your down payment fund. You'll have um, that by the end so of the year? No, I, I'm budgeting for 30000 So by the end of the year, I'll have 30000 But I have thirty five currently in savings from an emergency fund. Okay. And so I would set a very specific goal and go, all right, the house I want to get is 250000 Is that a reasonable amount? Yeah, that's uh, the new construction, 1,500 square foot. Yeah, it's reasonable. Okay, and what's your take-home pay every month? Um, so I, well, I kind of budget weirdly. I I only pretend I make $5,000 a month, but I've got uh, 2550 going into savings. 1000 of that is out of that 5000 so. But guess, what hits your, uh, what hits your bank 7, account 000. in a um, given month? So, so um, I have 5000 going to my checking, and then I have... A thousand twelve hundred. I'm sorry, twelve hundred going into a high yield savings account, and um, and then I get a six thousand dollar bonus a year. Okay, a year. So okay. let's call it sixty sixty five hundred bucks. Yeah, take home pay. Right. Okay, so with our parameters of kind of twenty five percent of your take home pay, and you can even factor that in after taxes, but before other deductions like health care or investing, that will help your numbers out with that twenty five percent parameter. Right, and so if you said let's call that seven thousand, um, twenty five percent seventeen fifty, so that becomes our new goal. Can we get a mortgage that's seventeen fifty for the principal, interest, taxes, and insurance? And now that helps um, us dictate the down payment goal. Yeah, so that would make a, a bigger down payment for sure. Which exactly. Is um, so that so means you might I'm need curious, like, you might need a hundred down on a two fifty yeah. on a fifteen year to get you there, and that might take you know you said you have thirty by the end of the year. The next year, could you bump that up and and have seventy five or a hundred if you worked your tail off? Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I would have to probably get a side job for that, but that's not out of the question. I think Dave says gazelle intensity, and I've definitely 
adapted that mentality. Um, so a side job isn't out of the question. But um, well, I'm just thinking by the end of next year, you'll have six oh, figures ready to put year. down. Yeah, yeah, for and sure. so yeah. I, you know, unless yeah. there's a rush to get into a home, I'm gonna just stay where I'm at and do this the peaceful way. Yeah, and that's kind of what I was considering. So I, the question is: Is a mortgage necessary, or what if I what if I took six years or seven years and paid for a cash and house, or, or I'm sorry, paid for a house in cash? Um, what is the what is the reason? What is the good reason to get into a mortgage without paying cash? Well, there's not a good reason to get a mortgage, but I would say if your timeline is six years, the problem with housing is that we know it's going to go up in value. And so what I don't want is you have this moving target where, oh my gosh, I saved 200000 but now the home is three hundred, And mm-hmm. I save up another hundred, now the mm-hmm. home is three fifty. Yeah. And so that's my worry, Rachel, when that's it comes it. to saving up cash over a long period of time. Yeah. And long term renting, you know, you're, you're just not building equity anywhere. So um so yeah, so the idea that yeah, saving and paying cash for a house is, I mean that that's an awesome goal. You could totally do that. If you could do that in two or three years, I would yeah, say that's a good Yeah, shorter plan. amounts, totally. Yeah, um, but I would yeah, I would make that I would give sense. myself like a good two years, um, and this this is now kind of just change at this point. But I was even thinking for your emergency fund, if you needed to take ten grand out of that, because you could be on the three month side. I mean, you're single. Um, no one's dependent upon your income. So even your emergency funds, if you needed to take a little bit out. But at that point, as we're talking, it's just 10 grand. Yeah. You know, or and so. are you investing more than 15% right now when you add it all up of your gross household income? Um, it, it's right at about, for my retirement. Yeah. Out of your income, how yeah, much it, are you investing? It's right at about 15. So I got 8% matched with my company and then uh, I'm doing 500 a month in Roth. So but are, the 8%, right right regardless 15. of the 8%, are you investing 15%? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not including the match. Okay, yeah. cool. And another option, you know, some people do this for a temporary amount of time. You can pause that investment to save up the down payment faster. Um, but with your plan, I mean, I, I don't feel a huge sense of urgency. I know you want to be a homeowner, but I also love the idea that you have a great savings muscle. And so I don't. I would try to keep investing 15% and get a side hustle to make up the difference to hit my down payment goal. And who knows? Maybe interest rates will go down, and that's going to help you. I was going to say it could be another world. House sooner. Yep, yeah. another world in two years. Who knows? It does, it does seem to move pretty fast. So yeah, we'll see. Um, I really appreciate that. I'm, it's just the twenty thousand dollars a year in, in rent is. Yeah, I think that's where the urgency is going. Well, I don't. Through, so I don't want you to feel to... this pain. I know it stinks because you're like, oh, I could be using this toward a house, but home ownership can be a blessing when done the right way. But we've seen it where it's a burden, and you have a lot of extra expenses when you're a homeowner. And so I'm seeing renting as buying patience right now, and I'm okay to write that check every month for the cost of patience. Hey, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thanks for the call, Benjamin. Great job, Benjamin. Got a great head on his shoulders, Rachel. I like Benjamin. I know. Very just calm, cool, collected versus I got to get a house, I got to get a house. Yes, yeah. And when you look at the numbers, that's always what kind of – is the guiding principle because our emotions and our feelings can guide us and not always and in a the real way estate agent's excitement <laughs> yeah, can guide us. And then the, you go to the Nothing bank. like a residential agent, just all the joy and excitement about they're, housing. They're very intense <laughs> and happy to help you get into that home of your dreams. Yes. yes and then the so banks, they're happy to loan you way oh, more than should be legal. Whatever like, wow, you I want. Got, I got pre-approved for half a million dollars. <laughs> Doesn't mean you should take out a half yeah, million right. dollar that's mortgage. Right. I know. I know. So that's why I like the 25% parameter. I know people look at us, Rachel, like, these people are crazy. What world are they living in? Well, the math hasn't changed. It's just going to be harder. You have to save up more down payment. You have to move further out. You got to go for the condo instead of the single family home. So this is just the hard part of being an adult. So we got to make adult decisions. And I want this to be a long-term peaceful decision, not the next call on the Ramsey show where they call in going, should we We sell the house? Yep. Yep. We bit off more than we could chew. Don't let that be you. Mm -hmm. This is the Ramsey show. Our scripture of the day, Psalms 37, 21. The wicked borrows but does not pay back, but the righteous is generous and gives.
Benjamin Franklin said, creditors have better memories than debtors. Oh. Huh. Some old school there financial wisdom. <laughs> yeah, Ben Franklin. Oh, he was doing well for himself, Benjamin I feel like. Benjamin Franklin. There you know, you the teeth, the leg. I don't know what else he had. I don't know what else he had going on, but he could afford it. The what? I don't Did he have wooden teeth or something? That Isn't was that George his... Washington. Oh, or dang not George it. Washington? Guys, I'm not a oh, historian. No. Listen, oh, I'm no. not a geographer. I heard. I hate, to, I hate to call you out, George. What'd you hear? So don't kill me, but that Chain gang? You, you didn't know who Margaret Thatcher was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ken told me that. And I thought, oh, no, George, the Iron Lady. I didn't know this was stuff. I'm, well, then Ken called me out for not knowing what a chain gang is in football. I was like, why would oh, I? I don't know what that is. I Thank you. And yeah, you know football. Sort of. <laughs> I'm like, guys, I was busy, I don't know, having a is life. That a chain, is that a thing? That is? It's the people who move the giant markers. Oh, but they call them a chain gang? They had to have a cool name because it's not a very okay. cool job. I don't know. Who Guys, is? this is why I stick to money questions. I embarrass myself <laughs> when I talk about historians and politicians and sports. I stay away from it all. I'll leave that to Ken Coleman. Well, the, the latest fact, history-wise, then we'll get to the phones. But Picasso? Yes! Found out. <laughs> he died in 1972. Died in 1973. And Rachel was like, I thought I he thought... was with Leonardo da Vinci. I thought he was part of the Renaissance. <laughs> I had no idea. Wow. But he just died in the 70s. Picasso. I was like, what? I thought all those guys were... Back with Listen, I got the Sistine Google. Chapel. I don't know. I don't know. I'll just Google it Anyways, if I need to know it. But so, until then, it doesn't sit in my brain. Sorry. In the 70s, Picasso. I mean, crazy. Anyways, yeah. that's my fact. That just blew my mind. All right. Timeless. Timeless. All right. Let's get to the phones. We're, we're better served there, Rachel, than talking about <laughs> anything about else. about 401ks. <laughs> Let's see if we can help Timothy in Los Angeles. What's going on, Timothy? Hey, guys. Can you hear me? Yes. Loud and clear. Okay, awesome. Well, uh, I tried to describe my situation. So um, I got out of college in 2021 and uh, just got married. And I had my associates, went to work for the past two years. And I'm currently making $20 an hour. It comes out to about uh, like 37 grand a year after taxes and everything. Uh, we had a, we have one, a one-year-old daughter. And um, we didn't really have any debt, but then my wife's car broke down and we decided to buy her a car last year. It was like $20,000 cash value. Um, and then uh, that car broke down and our warranty covered us to get a brand new engine on it. So uh, we had that and then I decided to start a business last July. And um, I'm generating through that business after um, after like in, in profit, I'm bringing in about half of my income, um, f from that I make at my day job. Now we did have about eight grand in debt because of that, starting the whole business and everything. And then, uh, we just used our taxes to pay that back like substantially. So now we only have about two grand in debt. Total. Um, yeah, well, well. Besides the car, the car is like we still have like twenty thousand dollars in the car. So, okay. uh, and it, yeah, is it, your you have the only um, income in the family right now? Yes, I, my wife's a stay-at-home mom, and was, the final thing was I was planning on going back to college this fall, and I, I get financial aid, so it'll probably be just as much as I'm making on my day job. But the only thing is. We just got news, and we're expecting twins. Whoa! Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. So a lot going on here. Thing. Yeah, this is the thing. We live in a small studio in the back house of her mo mother's house. So it's already me, her, and our one-year-old daughter. Now we're expecting twins. And previously, we were pre-qualified to get a house. We actually live in Bakersfield. We were pre-qualified to get a house for about 150000 But now, you know, we, with the car, we, we don't even know. We don't even know what we're going to do. Do you have any so money in savings? We're at. We have we have nothing. We just started budgeting. I just started getting plugged in with the the Ramsey show about two weeks ago. Three okay. weeks ago. Well, yeah. there, there's an order for you to become a homeowner, and it's when you're debt free with a fully funded emergency fund of three to six months of expenses, and you have a solid down payment. But until then, I'm okay. not going to Are get pre qualified. Are you guys pre -qualified. paying rent right now, Timothy? 
or are no, you living there for her, free? her family's yeah her yeah she we're living there for free so okay yeah the the big question is can you afford to continue living in california off a forty thousand dollar salary well um <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure. Um, like I said, I live in Bakersfield, so I mean, it's a little bit lower living expenses in LA. Um, but what would it cost you to go rent somewhere I just, I just that could know. fit your family right now with the twins? Well, a small, small would be like eight hundred, eight hundred bucks a month, and then a little bit bigger would be somewhere along to thirteen hundred bucks a month. This business you started, so you you made fourteen thousand last year because you made half of what you make normally. Yes. So, well, actually, I just started last July. So now I'm averaging about four, 400 bucks in sales a week and take home is 300 bucks a week. Okay. After, yeah, after input and all that stuff. Okay. It's about 15 grand in take home from this business. Yeah. Do you see yeah. it and, scaling? And it's growing Do you see it? substantially. It is. Okay. Oh, it's, okay. It's, it's scaling really fast. So I, think, I mean, and so the reality to me, yeah. I think is you're going to have two jobs. You're going to have this job that you're that you're growing, which is awesome. And hopefully it just skyrockets. I mean, that, that would be the hope and your day job. And you, you're going to be working both of those, I think for, for a period of time until the car's paid off and this $2,000 loan until you guys get a good emergency fund. Well, no, you know what? There's twins in the picture. So we're, we're pausing everything. So honestly, yeah. I would just stockpile cash at this point until the babies are here. Um, and it's probably a high, is it high, twins high risk? I mean, like they're, you know, can be. so I just, I yeah, would be, be, yeah. So all that to say, I would just be saving a crap ton. And once <laughs> I you- would just be putting so much away, honestly, I mean, like that's, that's going to be your best bet right now. And then once the twins are here and everyone's good, then I would look at paying off this $2,000 business loan, paying off the, the car. car. I mean, the car is a lot of your world. Yeah. How What's much the could car you- worth? Well, see, it was twenty thousand dollars cash value, right? Well, the engine, the engine busted, and they put a brand new right off the right off the assembly line, a revised version of the the engine, and it was about seventeen thousand dollar engine. But, but I went to, I went to see if we can. Yeah, but I went to go see the if I I mean I did an online like little quote and it only came out to like ten grand or something. So I don't know if I did it wrong or maybe I should, we should actually go into a dealer. But to see what the price should be, but I mean, I mean, after all that, I just, I just, we, my yeah. wife and I, we're willing to do what it takes to sell a car, but we're like, after is it a, all is that, a quality, reliable a car Lincoln. for the family, and it fits the, all the kids? Yeah, it's it's a nice car. It's a Jeep Grand Cherokee um, Eco Diesel, and it's 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 a really nice car. So okay. Well, for now, kids. Yeah. I would work to just pay that off in the debt snowball once the twins are here, get the emergency fund in place. Then you can think about going back to school and yeah, making I, sure you can cash flow that. But I don't think now's the time. No. no. Do you think that if I were able to grow the business large, cause, because it's, I grow, sell, and deliver microgreens, so I'm only spending about about. 12 hours a week doing You're saying doing if I did this full time, it could replace my income? Yes. That kind of yes. thing. Right yeah, now, with your situation, looking, yeah. it feels risky. Yeah, you can that, get the boat close to the dock later on, and you're like, oh, my goodness. I could totally see how if I did this full time, I could make more than I'm making in my – because right now, you're making your full-time salary plus the side money. If you jump to the side yeah. stuff, you're just going to replace your original income. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's so true. You're still better off right now financially with your situation, and I would work to go rent a place – Really, your goal is, can I make 6200 bucks take home to afford the $1,300 a month in rent? And I would make the jump to go rent at that place. Okay. Hope that helps, Timothy. You got uh, the road ahead of you, man. The twins alone, on top of the one-year-old, it's about to be a party. Yeah. So wishing you guys the I best know. in that. Also, what a, what a sweet blessing. That's, That's awesome. exciting. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. I'm George Camel, joined by Rachel Cruz this hour. Thank you to all of the folks in the booth keeping the show going this hour. And you, America, will be back before you know it.